Because John, he had this daring method. The way that he wanted them to repent was that they not go to the priest, that they not offer a sacrifice, but they go to God and repent and are baptized in water. The water doesn't wash away your sins. But when your sins have been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, we are baptized in water as a testimony of what God has already done in our lives. The sin has been washed away. As we go down into that water, it symbolizes the death of that old sinful man. As I lay you back in that water or whoever baptized you, it's like you putting that old sinful man into the grave. Maybe it would help when I baptize people if I left you under a little longer so you remembered. Because when you're under the water, you need to remember when you come back up, it symbolizes you are now that new creature in Christ Jesus. You don't need to drag the old sinful man out of the water with you. That was a daring method. That was something that the children of God had not experienced. There were ways that they would consecrate themselves and prepare, uh, like on Mount Sinai, and I'll talk more about that next week, when God was going to appear, and that included washing their clothes, washing their bodies. But this was different when he said, you need to come down into this water. You need to repent, and then we need to show that you have died out to the old sinful man. You're not going to do that anymore. You don't ask God to forgive you of sin because you're afraid of going to hell. You don't ask God to forgive you of sin because you, have a, you want a fire insurance policy. Well, you might, but what you need to do and what I need to do is when we do something that is not holy and we grieve the spirit of a holy God we grieve God's heart that should be our motive for repentance not fear that we're going to hell but if we actually have a relationship with God should it not bother us if we hurt him if we grieve him think about your other relationships when you hurt and grieve a person that you're in a relationship with, how long does that relationship last? Does that relationship grow? Are you able to nurture that relationship? Maybe there is an end to that relationship. Maybe that person is tired of you hurting them. Maybe that person is tired of you grieving their spirit. Or maybe you're the coin let's flip it over maybe you're the person who's tired of being hurt maybe you're the person who's tired of having your spirit grieved and you have been very patient with this other person or group of people but when we sin and I'll talk more about what sin is next week but when we sin when we do something that is not holy that is contrary to the will of God and we grieve the heart of God we grieve the spirit of God then we should be sorry because we did that instead of the fact that if we were to die at that moment or the rapture was to occur at that moment we would not spend eternity with him we would spend eternity apart from him in torment so John is saying, take responsibility. You know, be daring about it. Take responsibility. You know, don't just sit in the passenger seat on this thing and hope that the person that's in the driver's seat is going to get you to your destination. Don't, don't shirk responsibility and say, I'll just leave it to the high priest. If you're a member of the ch chosen nation of God, chosen people of God, don't leave it to me because Jesus when he was crucified 
that veil was ripped in two from top to bottom. We don't need a middleman anymore. We can now come boldly to the throne of grace. And so we need to use this daring method of confession and repentance. 